We've got this really cool interview with people that were really greatly affected or positively affected by the Cerber October um, challenge that's been sweeping the nation or sweeping the interwebs. I know for, you know, it's, it's mostly just dudes like me who listen to Joe Rogan, right? There's a lot of guys um, that listen to Joe Rogan and kind of do everything that he says. And, you know, we're oddly influenced by stuff that he's, he's doing. And even today, when I was listening to the Cameron Haynes and Joe Rogan podcast, I was thinking, you know what? I might need to buy a compound, bro. You know, <laughs> it gets you thinking about stuff like that. I'm even thinking of doing um, stand-up comedy for the first time this year as one of my challenges for Sober October. Um you know, running, doing martial arts. I did Muay Thai because of soap. You know what I mean? There's loads of influence happening, but I love that, you know, even though I, I'm not b- a big fan of the whole phrase of like, oh, use your platform responsibly and your kids are watching you. It feels as if, like, especially in the last few years, Joe Rogan has really purposely, um, or not purposely, but he's done it without being super, you know, preachy about it, has kind of made sure to, you know, he's changed the way he kind of communicates with people he doesn't agree with. He's very clear about making sure he tells people what he thinks is, you know, makes a good man or what he thinks makes a good person. And then it's up to you, the listener, to kind of divulge that information, pick apart from it and apply it to your life. So this is a really cool um, article here from the New York Post talking about some people that had benefit from the Sober October Challenge. I'll go here on the screen. It says the following. Um, this is from the New York Post. Um, how Joe Rogan inspired Sober October is getting people to be healthier. And I, I can agree with that. It's a nice fine John gentleman called Colin Dempsey chugging on a, a Guinness in one shot and another shot he's got a bottle of Pellegrino water. So awesome. So this is the following. Colin Dempsey often gets paid in drinks when he uh, gigs, right? But for the month of October, the 42-year-old single guitarist from Astoria is taking a big step to reduce his post-show IPAs. He's taking part in Sober October, a catchy-sounding sobriety challenge which has tens of thousands of posted pics of their mocktails on social media. Similar to the hugely popular Dry January, it's a way of announcing to the world they're cleansing up, they're cleaning up their acts for healthy reasons, if only for one month. My ideal goal would be to be able to drastically reduce my alcohol intake to a a rare occasion Dempsey tells the post if I say to myself get through October and break the habit then maybe I can have one drink once a week or once every two weeks which I agree with right I think that's essentially what Sober October does for me it doesn't necessarily mean I'm never going to have a, a, a sip of alcohol again but it's more so about in um, putting forward or establishing some good habits so that when I get off Sober October I'm not exactly going to go on an absolute tear up and drink every single day but I'm going to go back to what I was b- before post sober October where I was making sure I didn't have any alcohol at home I could only drink when I went outside um I only I only got on it quote unquote when I was it was a weekend and stuff like that never during a week little things that you do just to kind of make sure that you have some sort of structure in your life but then you know if you're not in sober October you can kind of you know the wheels can fall off the wagon and you can kind of get a bit crazy and you have a tough week at work or you can have a bit of an argument with a friend all of a sudden you start indulging in some dodgy stuff but so October is a good reset button it allows you to kind of get those habits back into um a kind of manageable fashion in some way shape or form again it could con- it could continue you could go on to be just become sober completely but for me i think it's more sort of a thing of like let me just put some um building blocks in place that allow me to be my best self or to be my most functional self so that i can do the things that i want to do um that i'm more happy with right i'm more, I'm more content with like you know running going to a gym recording this podcast writing learning a language reading a book those are things that really good really bring me happiness the other stuff is kind of a, a kind of auxiliary kind of plus on the end of it um, and it continues uh and, and while there are plenty of uh, boozy sober October fail pics documented on Instagram, the movement is gaining traction here after starting in Australia about 10 years ago. It's become an annual fixture of Joe Rogan's Joe Rogan Experience podcast, and celebs like Nikki Glazier and Roseanne Barr have joined the host to discuss the challenge. Barr told the host on his two, October 2 show that she, hasn't, that she hasn't taken Ambien since blaming it on the racist Twitter storm last year. Most, particip- most particip- participants say it's a health thing. Dempsey, for example, began running and eating healthily after turning 40. I felt like drinking was completely nullifying all the hard work I was doing with my diet and exercise, which I definitely agree. But I think, for me, again, my drinking has only really been ramped up because of DJing, but only happens when I DJ on the weekends. I only DJ Friday and Saturday for the most part, right? So I have those two days where I'm going to drink, but I don't necessarily drink during the week. Like, I know a lot of my friends after work, especially when I leave, especially when I used to work around Oxford Street, no, when I used to work around Liverpool Street Station or Shoreditch and you're leaving those areas to go to Liverpool Street Station to kind of go home, you'd always see people at the bars and clubs and stuff whatever having a drink after work or just before they go back home. And um, 
that's something I never really did. I only kind of drank when I was going out on a night out, which is a Friday, Saturday, or if I was DJing. So um, I didn't really have that um, feeling of like, I'm nullifying all my hard work because I'm training so much in the week. But it was more so a thing of like, the more I kept doing it, the more it started to seep into other areas of my life. And it's little by show, little by little, I might start drinking on a Tuesday. Blah, 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 blah. But for the most part, I like this because again, it, it kind of um, establishes some good habits going forward. Um, it says the following uh, for a 35 year old Nick an audio engineer from Chicago suburbs who declined to provide his full name for privacy reasons so October is one more step in his year long path to healthy living over the past year he's lost almost he's lost almost 100 pounds he has four four year old son he needs to have energy for but working upwards of eight hours a week propelled him to drink beer or whiskey after hours to ease the job stress I had noticed a pattern of me drinking it was getting worse adding that he first heard of Sub October on Joe Rogan's podcast though still early in the month Nick reports good, res- good results and and he's excited to see how cutting his alcohol intake will add to his overall endurance. For instance, a month ago before sober October, he went hiking while on vacation in Northern Illinois and didn't feel as winded. For those struggling with alcoholism, sober October and dry January aren't necessarily safe solutions. But for those who just want to keep their drinking at a healthy level, the month-long booze vacation can be beneficial, says Cindy Feinberg, a New York Post City, a New York City-based substance abuse specialist who runs a recovery coach. And why? I always think it's a good thing to explore your drinking. She says, I think people still uh, step away from sober October thinking, this is how I feel, this is what I've been discovered like drinking. Jay Huffman, a 30-year-old product manager outside of Atlanta, usually keeps himself to just several drinks per week, like a nightly glass of wine and a few drinks on Friday and Saturday nights. But in 2006, his father was diagnosed with a renal cell uh, sarcimonia, a kidney cancer that's not caused by drinking, but one that drinking definitely didn't help. His father survived and it made Huffman stop drinking for some time. Now Huffman has a four-month-old daughter, Cecilia, and he'd like to have a clear head for her. Though he's inclined to grab beers with friends on weekends, which I want, I'm a big fan of again, I think that's probably the best way to do it socially in that regard, especially not not as a kind of stress reliever. I think socially with friends to kind of, you know, talk about some shit, you know, laugh and joke, have a good time, that's all right. But to relieve stress, I don't think it's a, ever, ever a good idea. It only kind of leads to uh, bad, bad, bad results or bad decisions. Um, now Huffman's a former um, daughter of Cecilia and he'd like to have a clear head for her, though he inclined to drink, grab drinks on the weekend. He thinks Sober October can help him stay clean all days of the week. I just think it's healthy for anybody uh, to have um, a look at their relationship with those types of things. So yeah, great, great little article there from uh, the New York Post. I recommend you check it out. I put in a show notes for you guys to see. It's called How Joe Rogan Inspires Sober October. And yeah, I'm on the train too. So jump on board, Sober October friends. Jump on board.